Junpei, surviving? Let's see what tale you spin. What's up guys, welcome to you, and here we are to do a breakdown slash live reaction and review to Noah Operators, how Junpei could have changed everything. And I'm interested, I'm interested. Notably, I'm a guy who like, likes Junpei for the character development that he calls Yuji Itadori. And that's literally it. Notably, your boy is not a Junpei truther. I wouldn't dare call myself a Junpei fan. I wouldn't call myself a Junpei jump. None of that. Honestly, half the time I legit forget the character exists until I start recounting Itadori Yuji's character development and the relationship between Yuji Itadori and Mahito, who is another character who hasn't been around for like a hundred chapters. Junpei hasn't been around for 200. So I'm very interested to see how No Operator takes this one. This one's gotta be exciting. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me, are you ready? I need you to hear me when I say three, two, one, go. One of the most trap. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact: you to yeah, have it on me, to keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact: I'm going to yap quite extensively, if I do say so myself, if I had to be completely honest with you, individual to individual, I will be yapping extensively. So, if you would like to peep the original video without my endless yapping, my domain expansion, a rise of the captivating yapper, the link to No Operator's channel in the original video will be in the description down below. Go run it up, go like it up, in fact, let me like this video right now. Speaking of which, could you like the video right now? Really appreciate it. Helps the channel a lot, trust me. But with that being the case, ah, this is interesting. Notably, I always try to like, go into reaction videos with a general idea on the topic itself. How Junpei could have changed everything. But notably, I don't know. Junpei would just be another warm body to eventually get God. Like, I feel like if anything, I mean, he may cause issues, but not really, though. Because notably, Sukuna doesn't do anything when Yuji asks him to. And like, afterward, I guess, Yuji, I guess Junpei joins Jujutsu high, but what does Junpei really change in the festival? Or not the festival. What does... What does Yuji really change? I, mean, I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. What fundamentally changes when you add Junpei to the narrative? Because you aren't giving him a whole colony to himself. You aren't giving him like who is he fighting in Shibuya? Like I feel like he just ends up being character development later. So I don't actually have much to say. I'm, th I'm just interested to see how no operator tackles this one. So let's not waste any more time. Let's actually hop right into it. Tragic deaths in early Jujutsu Kaisen is that of Junpei Yoshino, a young man who found himself in- Is it? I haven't even played Persona 3. I don't even own Reload. Why did my brain consistently keep screaming his name is Junpei Yori? I'm not even sure if that's Junpei from Persona 3's real name, but Junpei Yori is ringing in my head. I know I've consumed a lot of Persona 3 content. I've consumed a lot of con Persona content for someone who only owns a sealed copy of Royal that I have yet to play yet. I think I actually own the original two. I think I bought both, have not played either. But with that being the case, that's terrifying. I, I forgot his last name is Yoshino. Let's see. The wrong place at the wrong time, bullied and rejected by society, and negatively influenced by a nasty curse spirit like Mahito. A latent talent to see curses was altered by idol transfiguration to be I was about to make a joke, let me know. Come outright sorcery. Bless now with Jujutsu. Junpei Yoshino, after the death of his mother, went on a complete rampage of the classmates who wronged him. Putting Junpei at odds with Itadori, someone he had come to consider a friend amongst all this chaos. Now a curse user, a Jujutsu High student like Yuji has no choice but to fight or turn Junpei back to the side of good. And just before that has any chance of occurring, the consequences of Junpei's actions take hold. Even after losing his mother and almost crawling himself out of the pit of darkness Mahito dragged him beneath, not even Yuji was able to save Junpei from the fate that was laid out before him. But what if he was? My members voted and asked me to create a brand- Teen Gojo versus every sorcerer. That's interesting. I I'm going to tackle these because I can actually have like a general idea of how to do these. I Brain Blast. Jimmy Neutron times 5 times 3 times 47. Teen Gojo versus every sorcerer. Teen Gojo wipes literally everybody. 
Except for maybe Yuta, but that's if Yuta doesn't get Hollow Purple immediately. Which he may... Oh, actually, if it's Team Gojo's in Pre-Awaken, then he gets washed by a lot of people. Anyone with the domain. But, like, if it's Awakened Team Gojo, that man's an animal. He's a monster. And he teleports away and Hollow Purple's everybody. Which is really, really annoying. Uh, a Bleach fight analysis. There are a bunch of Bleach fights. I can't really go into that. What if Junpei Survivor covering that right now? Toji versus Sakamoto days. Toji should fodorize? Once like, I, but then again, I'm not too brushed up on Sakamoto Day's cross first scaling, but like, even with the lowest interpretation of Toji's speed, Toji should wipe that. But then again, I saw the Rapper's video on that. I know he ended up doing that, so I'll, I'll have to cover that as well. Hmm. Intriguing. Yuta versus Yuki and Yorozu, Yuta slams. Yeah, Yuta should slam. Yorozu may be weird. Yorozu may be weird. But at the same time, with how that fight's explained and rationalized and like what we get in that fight in retrospect, like none of her hits really matter. Kasukuna is just consistently adapting. And notably, I don't think she lands hits until he actually activates Maharaga. Because, like, the moment she gets out the bug armor, when she actually starts landing... No, she lands a hit before that. Actually, no, no, she doesn't. She doesn't land a hit before Maharaga. Because she brings out the bug armor, and then does the whole metal thing, and then he summons Piercing Bolt. Yeah, so... I think Yuta has just... Domain. GG's. Domain Jacob's Ladder. Oh, no! I can't Domain Expansion! What do you mean? Rika, don't tear me apart! So, like, that, that's all that. But Junpei survived. What if he lived? I don't know. Interesting. Just since Jujutsu, I gotta see. I gotta see what he's taking this one. I couldn't even... Like, this is one where I can't even think of anything. This is... This will be interesting. New scenario in Jujutsu Kaisen. One in which Junpei actually lives. And Mappa no longer has to be hated for making us think he joined up with Jujutsu High with that first OP. In this video... I do love that, though. That, that is one of the beauties, and I know that's going to sound so twisted, especially as a guy who doesn't actually watch the anime, at least not consistently. I love when anime studios take advantage of the fact that they've read the manga. Like, obviously, they're adapting the manga. But I love that. When they have, like, full knowledge of the narrative and actively use the medium to mess with you. Like, whether that be in filler or be in something as subtle as the intro, to, to sprinkle that in, to mess with people like that, that's beautiful. I love that. I love that. It's one of the beauties of adaptation, right? Like, notably, as much as I do love genuine, one-to-one, -one, proper, beautiful, top-tier adaptations of manga to anime, like, if the Demon Slayer manga was adapted one-to-one, -one, it would not be anywhere near as popular as it is. The Demon Slayer anime elevated the manga. Jutsu Kaisen elevated the manga. The anime, at least. It has contradictions to the manga, like a scaling system, but other than that, it elevates everything, in my opinion. And this is from a guy who doesn't necessarily watch the anime, but I've seen enough. I know enough. So, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I do like when they mess around like that. Really, really play at your heartstrings, suck at your heartstrings, give you a little bit of hope. And Mappa is very notorious for that. Like, the Maharaga and Jogo fights especially, it's legit just Maharaga and Jogo copium. It's just that. And I think that's beautiful. <laughs> Really get your hopes up, really get you thinking like, yes, maybe, maybe my goat stand, stand a fraction of 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 a chance. And then they don't. But let's see. Not only will I switch things around to keep Junpei alive, I want to consider some of the big changes this would cause to Jujutsu Kaisen's story, as well as visualize what a fully realized and trained sorcerer Junpei might look like. Can he progress past Shikigami and actually unlock a real curse technique? And what does this mean for Yuji and Mahito's dynamic now that Junpei wasn't murdered? All things we'll be putting to the test in this video, sponsored by the beautiful members. All things we'll be putting to the test in this video, sponsored by the beautiful and amazing Jogo Gang. If that sounds... Oh, yeah, members. Okay, uh, but... Uh, I mean, realistically, I once again, I have not read that portion of the series in forever. I don't think Moondrag is actually a technique. Then he shouldn't be able to. You can't unlock curse techniques. That's, that, that's like the whole thing. Like, you, you can awaken to them early in life, but I don't think you're supposed to be able to like actually just get one. I don't think that's possible. You have to be weird like Yuji, who has, like, the potential to eat or absorb something. Like, Yuji's special. For... What was the other thing he tackled? The changes to... Oh, to Mahito and Itadori's dynamic. That's also an interesting one, because, yeah, a lot of Itadori's direct hatred for Mahito is born of Junpei. So, like, I guess there's less malice there. But Mahito is still a curse. And... 
Yuji still is a sorcerer. So I think they'd have a lot of their same dynamic, but there would be less animosity at first. I think there'd be a massive spike in animosity when Shibuya hits, if everything in Shibuya goes like it should. But who knows? Maybe it won't. That's the thing. With Junpei alive, you never know. Maybe we'll see. Because I just... That's the thing. I don't see him having much impact unless you put him in, like, the most optimal, crazy, next-level situation. Which I guess him surviving is the next-level, crazy, optimal situation that he really needs. But I don't know. Let's see. No operator. It's interesting to you. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And most importantly... Thank you for watching. Oh, Most great. importantly, we need to create a scenario in which Junpei does not get transfigured, which ultimately is pretty easy, seeing as we only need to enter a timeline in which Junpei simply moves out of the way of Mahito's grasp after placing his trust in Yuji and turns to stand beside his friend. Or Yuji, sensing the danger ahead of time, instead of freezing up, runs and punches the out of Mahito's Language. instinct. Honestly. Gosh darn it, I forgot. This is a double operator video. Gosh darn editing me. Wake up! <laughs> I know I know you're sleeping, but I need to wake. I know you're sleeping, but wake up today. Oh editing me. Something a Yuji of today in the manga would do, so it's not even too far out of his character. Now the only thing is though, like, it's not too far out of his character now. Because he's developed. In the moment, you could definitely argue that's a bit more difficult. But then again, at the same time, this Yuji... That's the thing. That's the funny thing about Yuji. Yuji does freeze up at this point. But at the same time, it's for like more terrifying situations. Mahito just showing up and being an evil cursed spirit. They can talk. Yuji, yeah, he could probably just move Junpei. Or Junpei could just move. I go with Junpei moving. Because once again, one of the biggest things about Itadori, especially at this point. Because this is... Before? After? I think it's... I forget if this is before or after his death. One of the biggest things about Yuji's death is that he froze up. He was terrified. So, like, Junpei just moves. I can see that. At this point, Junpei is still broken down and beaten, barely able to combat. But he should at least be able to support Itadori and keep himself alive until Nanami shows up. With three sorcerers now up against an unawakened Mahito with no domain expansion at first, do things progress any differently? In my opinion, besides Junpei staying alive, much probably wouldn't change in the overall finale of the versus Mahito arc. That's the thing, right? Because... I mean, you you have to, you have to really start diving into super hypothetical scaling. There's nothing like Junpei wouldn't be able to damage Mahito's soul, obviously. So like, his support wouldn't even be helpful. And remember, at this point, Junpei is still much weaker than even Itadori. Not to talk of Nanami, and Nanami is implied to still be superior to this Yuji, even like pre overtime or anything like that. So like, Junpei, if anything, would be a liability because like. He'd probably get in the way by trying to help. But, yeah, I, I guess the only thing is, he's right, just Junpei's survival. Because I don't think Mahito gets exercised here. I think, if anything, he may flee quicker. He may be like, oh, three on one, that's no fun. And he may leave. But then again, if he leaves, he may not get his domain. So, mm, let's see, let's see. After physically getting the advantage over the disaster curse, with or without Junpei, Mahito's self-embodiment of perfection... Ah, well, yeah, and then Sugana comes in and is like... Off me! <laughs> what is that? I, I I forget the movie. There's like some. I keep seeing this like one meme of like get off me. <laughs> that's the channel. Like, that's kind of what Sugana does. I have no context. I just have the audio. I think that's that's Timothy Chalamet who does that. It's Dune. Dune. I think like Dune Two or something where he just yells get off me. I don't know, I've been, I've been hearing that audio and that meme so consistently that now I can't dissociate that from the Sukuna thing. Like, I think every single time Sukuna tries to have his soul interact with, he always just yells, GET OFF ME! Because he remembers what Kenjaku did and all the freaky things Kenjaku did with Sukuna's soul that you know Sukuna didn't consent to. But let's see would probably awaken before exorcism. And no one at this point is reactive enough to catch his craft from slipping down those sewers. Too new with his powers and exhausted after fighting Yuji, mentally broken after going full school and then coming back to the light side would take 
too much of a toll on Junpei for him to make a difference in this outcome. However, with time and training, there's still one more significant Mahito fight Junpei can change. But we're getting ahead of ourselves now. Completely traumatized and betrayed by the curse who took advantage of them, losing his mother and his entire normal teenage life because of his own foolish and selfish actions. Junpei would find himself amongst unknown Jujutsu High faculty, with his only lifeline being Itadori Yuji, a kid he's known for all of about 48 hours. So justifiably, I think Junpei would be a little too deep in emotional turmoil to even try and participate in the exchange event. This would give his character... <laughs> Is that Junpei? But like, um, that's the thing. It's, it's so, it's so weird. Because, like, if you... Here's the thing, right? And no operator skipping it. I, I agree, skipping it's better. It makes sense within the context of the character at the time. But also, at the same time, like... If he skips Kyoto... Like, what? in what training are we giving him? Like, like what, what does he do? I'm mainly thinking. Because, notably, that's the thing about Jujutsu Kaisen. And, I, and it's one thing I praise the series for. It will also critique the series for. Except for explicitly skipped time skips which sounds so stupid but like hear me out hear me out except for the time skips that explicitly get like woo, like the one month time skip the time skip between kyoto and shibuya like stuff like that the series is very tightly written whenever plots actually happening like shibuya is extremely strict if one character is moved slightly in shibuya everything falls apart like I, i'm not kidding try and remove a character from shibuya that actually has a name and isn't like an assistant manager you move nanami things get weird you move nobara things get weird you move itadori things get weird you move meimei things get weird like everything just gets weird if you move things around in shibuya so adding a fodder like i'll be real a completely fodder character doesn't necessarily change much and i guess you could maybe you could probably throw him in with like maybe against the Death Painting Brothers, maybe? But even then, he'd just be a liability again and could end up being character developed. So I don't know. I'm very interested. Ah, let, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. After a time to heal wounds, both emotional and physical, while also allowing Yuji plenty of time to reconvene with the main cast without having to worry about Junpei. With Gojo's eagerness to adopt troubled children, I'm sure housing and enrollment in Jujutsu High would be no issue. Sotaru even says himself back in Hidden Inventory, the demand for sorcerers is so high, they're not gonna fuss over a rocky resume. During this hiatus of Junpei's character from the main story, his development would mostly focus on his trust issues. Not just with Mahito, who's still running loose, but even with the organization that just took him in. How can Junpei fully trust Jujutsu Society when they're plan- I'm sorry, this Persona music is- <laughs> what, what is it with video game music? Sonic, Persona, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts, but like, it's always gas. I can't, what is a video game series with bad music that has any notoriety at least? Undertale, oh, let's just go. ...on executing Itadori. And it's not like Gojo, the character who would most likely be spending the most time trying to rehabilitate Junpei, is gonna foster much trust in the Jujutsu higher-ups either. So, with this neglect to truly trust anybody, let alone himself or the decision he makes, Junpei will truly have a hindrance on his abilities as a sorcerer. Nevertheless, having access to train with Gojo Satoru will do a young student like Junpei wonders in the area of understanding what he has available available to him and his own fighting style. In the time span between the exchange event and the Shibuya incident, Junpei would not only grow in strength, but out of his trauma, would begin to foster an intense grudge against the cursed Mahito. That negative energy of revenge, fueling his power and cursed energy reserves. On the flip side, Yuji, now glad that his friend Junpei is alive, and being able to train with Junpei and experience Jujutsu suit in life with him, doesn't really hold any more of hatred against Mahito than he would your average curse. Perhaps they share a personal relationship due to fighting before, and of course Yuji wouldn't like the whole plot to kill Junpei's mom thing, but other than that, the hatred definitely does not run as deep between these two as it did before. This okay, that made me bad. That, that, because that's the thing, usually turns a lot of that negativity into strength. 
that may be bad. Uh, but that's the thing. It, at least in my opinion, Junpei is like an underlying element of Itadori's fury towards Mahito. Not like, obviously he's still the main core until obviously Nanami and Nobaraga got right in front of him. But even with that being the case, it's hard to, I, though I, I can see the path. Maybe Once again, I may be seeing a vision that isn't there and I probably should just let him rock. But like if I had to take a guess, the main reason, like you, sure, you get a stronger Junpei but you'd likely get a weaker Itadori due to the lack of hatred, the lack of malice, the lack of negativity. And honestly, with a weaker Itadori, but that's the thing, if he makes it through, with the Black Flash amps, he still gets in Kyoto, because at least that's what I assume. Like, he doesn't mention anything about Kyoto going any differently. Like, it's not like Yuji is, like, weaker against Hanami or anything like that. And he's still, like, if Kyoto still is normally, Yuji gets Black Flash Amps, but less hatred. And less hatred means less malice. Less malice means less cursed energy, or at least raw power in cursed energy. So that may be bad with the Mahito matchup. And the thing with Junpei, if he gets placed anywhere else but with Yuji, then it's just a weaker Yuji against Mahito. But at the same time, I don't think Yuji would be that... That's the thing, because it's so unquantifiable, the difference between, like, a hypothetical hatred amp to Yuji and, a, like, a non-hatred amp to Yuji against Mahito and Shibuya. But I don't think Yuji would use lose to the Grasshopper. But that's the thing, he has negativity, because he asked the Grasshopper, like, Ayo, bro, I'm about to start squeezing, yo. Where, where, where's the patch face curse? So, so he, does, he does go into Shibuya with a certain type of emotion behind him that he may be lacking. So, that may be bad, but I still see him losing to Choso. I still see Sukuna being Gojo, Jogo'd, because once again, I don't think Junpei changed anything there. I think, ultimately, Jogo will end up finding Dagon cooked, fried, and well-served on a platter. And then, he's gonna sense the girls, who are gonna free Sukuna, and then Sukuna's gonna wild out, and then Sukuna's gonna level Jibuya, and then the negativity's gonna kick in from there. There's just, like, ne less negativity against Mahito, and Junpei's there. I'm interested to see how he incorporates Junpei into Shibuya. This will be interesting, let's see. Will change how a lot of things go in the Shibuya incident and even further beyond. But before we get into all that, let's discuss how Junpei would develop as a sorcerer and theorize where he'd really sit on the power scale. At the start of his sorcerer journey... Top of the domer, he shouldn't... He should legit be the weakest. Like, even with all the negativity fueling him, without like an actual proper curse technique, and once again, I am completely blanking on moon dregs whether or not it is actually a real curse technique but without any of that proper sauce built into him i don't really see junpei becoming even more powerful than nobara just considering junpei will have a little to no real battle experience like nobara hit a black flash in the battle against the death paintings megami unlocked his domain expansion yuji tadori hit multiple black flashes in kyoto tying the record or at least nanami's record like like, they actually have combat experience. Meanwhile, in this timeline, while Junpei would have some combat experience with, like, you know, you know, uh, Junpei versus the school. And obviously, he'd probably join in on a Mahito fight, whether it be the initial Mahito fight with Yuji and or the Mahito-Nanami fight. Mahito versus Nanami and Yuji fight. Well, he would join in there. That's so little real experience. And while training is good, training is nice, it's not, it's not enough. I don't think it's enough for him to really be stronger than anybody. You may be able to make a argument, but even then, no bar. Once again, with that black flash, with it on her record, I'm not really seeing it. And with her actually having an actual technique, Yuji benefits a lot because of his raw physical stats being crazy and his good curse energy reinforcement after hitting the black flash. Megumi benefits from the domain expansion and you know crashing out a little bit and a really really good base technique at least for that time in the series because I think the ten shadows does get crapped without Maharaga and. No bar just has a solid technique with a good extension technique. So like, I, I don't know. Let's see where he puts Junpei. Junpei was given a small burst of cursed energy to his brainstem by Idol Transfiguration, which granted Junpei the ability to summon a Shikigami using his hair as an effigy. The familiar named Moondrag is a poisonous jellyfish Shikigami that even early on gave Junpei the power to fight somewhat on par with a new sorcerer like Yuji. The classmates Junpei attempted to massacre thought the teenager acquired psychic powers since he was able to lift their full weight with Moondreg's tentacles and toss them with little effort. Any and all contact with Moondreg's skin would cause a poisonous reaction as its entire body is surrounded in toxic fluid. Moondreg also has tendrils with spikes for offensive attacks and even faster lethal dosing. 
With even more refinement and cursed energy control, not only would Junpei find the core of his cursed energy and unlock the ability to reinforce his punches and kicks with power, this would increase both attack power and durability, meaning Moondreg could also vastly increase in size, its tendril span allowing for even greater range with its strikes. The Shikigami could also develop ways to spit projectile venom for a larger variety of ways to inflict poison on their enemies. However, in my opinion, the best... That's interesting. I mean, I get once again, I don't know. I'm going to trust Noah on this one because he clearly read the early series and probably has more context than me. But, like, wouldn't Moondrug just be uniform? And, like, locked to Junpei's output? Like, I can see Junpei himself getting stronger. I agree with that. I think with a better understanding of cursed energy and reinforcement and all that. But, like, I don't think I don't think Moondrugs would get any stronger. Unless I'm, unless I'm jelly tweaking. I don't think he would. Because once again, it's not like Moondregs is a technique tied to Junpei. He uses his hair as a medium, but I don't think like I don't think Moondregs is Junpei's technique, and I don't think the output of Junpei would change all too much. I think his skill with Moondregs would increase, but I don't think Moondregs itself would get any stronger. And notably, I, I think Moondregs is neat, but it's also mostly effective against humans. Like, I'm thinking of all of his hypothetical matchups he could run into in Shibuya, and unless he's fighting like Al Asaka alongside Megami and Itadori, which is possible. I'm assuming he's probably going to go down that route because you want to keep Junpei and Itadori together and stuff like that and probably throw Junpei into the Choso fight, see if... But then again, like, does the poison even interact with Choso that well? Choso's poison. So, like, I'm not sure how much Junpei changes there. He may become a liability once again. Who, Mahito? Moondrakes ain't going to matter to Mahito. That's going to be light. If anything, he could accidentally tag Itadori and do damage to him, which wouldn't be good. Then again, Itadori's immune to poisons as well, so... And we already skipped over the death paintings and Kyoto. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely wondering a little bit. I'm genuinely wondering. Maybe he goes up against the grasshopper and the poison's effective there, but I, I don't really see the matchups that Junpei really benefits from. Because a lot of the, at least, he would, he's going to benefit a lot more when he gets to the culling games. Because presumably that's what no operator said. He's going to go through Shibuya and then the culling games. So like, he benefits a lot more once he gets there. But up until that point, I'm not I'm not sure if I really see the vision, if you know what I'm talking about. But I am blind, so let's see. This development for Junpei and Moondrag would come from witnessing and watching recordings of Fushiguro Megami in the exchange event. Seeing the way Megami works with his Shikigami into close quarters battle and not being afraid to put himself in harm's way would really influence how Junpei uses Moondrag, creating a new combination technique between the two of them. Junpei will lie to you and tell you he didn't copy this form from a western movie he watched, but after Moondreg condenses all of its power into its tentacles and spiked tendrils, its head would latch onto Junpei's back. Sticking firm, its tentacles would wrap around Junpei's shoulders and be able to extend over his arms and legs to create extra power if needed, creating a mobile armor that leaks and emanates poisonous liquid and fog while four and up to eight spiked tendrils protrude from the jelly-like head on Junpei's back, ready to independently strike and stab at opponents from any angle while Junpei fights his enemies head-on. After learning hand-to-hand -hand combat from both Satoru Gojo and Itadori Yuji, Junpei is more than confident to go up and- I'm sorry. That's from DDS2? Battle theme? I think. I don't only because of Deus' videos. I'm probably going to cop that for some of my videos. Because I, lo I love that. Da -da 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 -da. I'm sorry. But that's interesting. Notably evolving Junpei that much. But then again, right? You got to have him be strong. Like, notably, I'm thinking the mo I'm going like the down the most pessimistic route. Like, bro has no battle experience. He, he, he doesn't really have control over the Amp Shikigami. Because it isn't really his Shikigami to Amp. Like, I'm going, I'm going crazy with it. But like. That's me going crazy in the negative route. Like, oh, Junpei's not that guy. He never could be that guy. He never will be that guy. I'm, I'm just being a Junpei hater. And a Yori doubter, if you will. But I see. I see what he's saying. No operator. Maybe you're right. You're so right. But, like, that's interesting. That's an interesting path to take him down. I mean, make him more broken, I guess. I mean, that, he's going to need it. <laughs> he's, it's just if he's going to survive through Shibuya and not just turn to more character development. Yeah. He's going to need it. So let's see against curses and sorcerers alike in close quarters combat, especially with Moondreg's armor and new gauntlets. 
making each attack he lands significantly more powerful in both physical and toxic means. Junpei's need to surpass Mahito not only manifests in this poison defense that naturally keeps the disaster curse's hands off of him, his lack of a curse technique causes him to create more packs with familiars. And keeping along with the poison trend, if Junpei was to gain any new Shikigami, I think two giant centipede Shikigami would be appropriate. Much larger and more ferocious than the weak ones we see Geto and Kenjaku curse manipulate, poison would seep from the centipede's scaly bodies as they quickly swam through the ground, creeping by, or if necessary, mildly quaking the earth below with power. These not only act as a great way to constrict opponents, they make great sneak attack opportunists with their ability to dig below ground. Although, for all their speed and stealth, they're not very durable. At least compared to Moondreg, who again, is basically a jelly-like substance. Although this is barely enough to make him any higher than a grade 2 sorcerer at best. That's my big thing, right? Like, I mean, this, this that's the thing. This sounds so gas. Like, I ain't even gonna lie. I like the setup. And of course, I, never, I didn't really think about the idea of him, like, doing more contracts with more Shigigami and stuff like that. Like, this is really expanding the power system to, like, utmost degrees. So, like, we know you can do that. We know you can add a whole lot more. You can always consistently, like, stack Shigigami and stuff like that. You can grow further and further and further and further and further beyond. But, like, is he really doing all this? I mean, I guess because he hates Mahito. But that that's a little... That's a little buku bonk. That's a lot. That's a lot, lot. That's a lot, a lot, a lot. But once again, you gotta give him juice. You you gotta juice him up. So I guess I'm leaning with it. I'm rocking with it. But it's just, it's it's like blowing my mind because I would have never considered it this way. I would legit just think him surviving Mahito would lead to him like falling later, <laughs> falling into that app. So like I I personally 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 but let's see let's see we set up june pay we gave him some gains we made him a high grade two possibly low semi grade one let's see him clock Junpei's rapid recovery, along with the discovery of the happenings in Shibuya, would lead Junpei to sneak out of his room at Jujutsu High and wander into the depths of the Shibuya incident. Having the surest of feelings for some reason, he'll encounter his mother's killer at the source of this pandemonium. Junpei would easily slip into the chaos of the Shibuya incident with little to no problem, and, in my opinion, the most accurate location for Junpei to wind up in would be with Nobara and Nita as they make their escape from Maki and now Vito Zenit. This would of course make the fight against Haruta Shigemo a 2v1 and give Nobara much more of a chance to take less damage before Grade 1 Nanami Kento comes. Paired with his new close quarters combat Moondreg combination, as well as the long range and additional hits the Centipede Shikigami allow for, the Miracle Cursed user would have his work cut out for him. Also considering Nobara's projectile nails are already Ready hard enough to dodge. The auxiliary manager could probably escape this encounter, but talks unharmed, and the duo of Junpei and Nobara should be able to take Haruta down and exhaust his miracles. Be that through Nobara's resonance and hairpin strikes, or Junpei's toxic attacks through Moondrag or Centipede, even if Haruta's hand sword curse tool acts as a secondary opponent, one quick nail to the ground will keep the hand nice and snug and out of reach. Plus, invigorated by his revenge against Mahito and the newly acquired confidence after watching someone like Megami excel in combination with his own Shikigami, Junpei would be more than ready to take on a cursed user with merely luck on his side. The real fight doesn't begin until him and Nobara run into the Mahito doppelganger, split off from the main body after the sealing of- That's an interesting place to put him. That's an interesting place to put him. And, uh, ah, that's the thing, I smell character development, but he's gonna make it out, he's gonna make it out based on how no operator structured the video so far. But yeah, 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 definitely, because that's the thing, right? Nobara definitely gets done dirty by just being in a 1v1 and also having to worry about Nita. Like, that's the wombo combo, I was about to say dream scenario, but that's like the wombo combo nightmare scenario. The fact that she had to worry about somebody else, and she had unknown factors in Haruta, and Haruta was running the 1v1s. And, like, they're clearly they have relative physical stats and stuff like that. Like, Nobara got <laughs> knocked. But with Junpei there, yeah. If, especially, I mean, obviously, I would argue Nobara is still Junpei superior at this point. Once again, just way more battle experience. Actually had a Black Flash at this point. Obviously, should be superior. But just having a second pair of eyes there. 
it's always better to be jumping unless your name's Sato Gojo. So that is a that's a good idea. Slide him in there. But then we're gonna get Mahito V here's the thing though. With Junpei and Nobara there, maybe Mahito doesn't escape. Cause that's that's a that's a two for one combo right there. That's a two for one combo large bev. And the bev is poison. But then again, how does that affect Mahito? Mahito shouldn't be bothered by poison. He just fix himself. But still a whole second body there. And especially once they figure out that he can't actually use his curse technique, the hands don't actually do nothing. He's got to worry about the physicals. I could see Nobara and Junpei cornering, bro. And Junpei's likely going to be tweaking out, too. So you know, you know he's going to crash out at, like, top efficiency against Mahito. He's going to be like, how dare you? You took my mother from me. I don't care if you're a fake. I'm going to slaughter you. I'm going to rip your bones out. I'll taste your tongue myself. And then Mai's going to be like, taste my tongue. And then Nobara's going to be like, taste his tongue. And then Juju's going to be like, I tasted your tongue! And then he's going to rip out Mai's tongue and eat it. Or like, feed it to the centipedes. So, okay, let's see. Let's see, though. Let's see. Tataru Gojo. It's not surprising at all to think that Junpei, unlike Nobara, would want to go into the barrier again to save their friends. Even after being told they're too weak for the scenario. It just makes sense to me. Nobara's grit and loyalty with Junpei's need for revenge against Mahito. Bringing them together, it must be fate. The Mahito double would taunt Junpei in a devious manner, shapeshifting into his mother and pulling all types of diabolical tricks. As ultimately, Mahito's goal is to lure Nobara and Junpei back to the main station fight between him and Yuji in order to continually torture Itadori's mental well-being. This would, one, make Mahito's job much easier, as Junpei being starved for vengeance makes him a cinch to manipulate, and Nobara would not be able to stand in the way of that grudge. This also makes way for, two, Nobara no longer unlocking the core of her cursed energy, as she isn't embarrassed by Haruta and showed up by Nanami, or pressed by the Mahito double, since Junpei took her character spotlight away. This not only makes a that's interesting. I guess. I guess, yeah. But that's the thing. Doesn't she... She reflects on the core of her cursed energy because she had a black flash. She says, remember that sensation. Then she locks in. So I think even with Junpei... In fact, I think she would actually lock in even harder with Junpei there. Because she'd see him genuinely tweaking and be like, whoa, hold on a second. I can't be left behind. And then she'd lock in even more. She'd double down on locking in. She'd lock in twice. And then hit like a flash black instead of a black flash. But... Once again, that's interesting. The idea, but I guess if Mahito runs, notably, it would have to it depend on how the battle gets situated. If it is Nobara and Junpei standing here, and then the Mahito clone merely rocking over here, then I guess, like, yeah, Mahito could just be like, ah, shoot, never mind, I need y'all to be some character development real quick. And then, boom, dash to the other direction. But if Junpei's up in Mahito's face, trying to get that moon dragon and hit him with a me, 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 me. And then you got Nobara from the long range hitting the ming 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 ming. Then Mahito, at least the double, may not be able to escape. Because I'm not sure if he can do the splitting thing like the main one can. So it may actually be cooked there. And like, when I say cooked, I mean cooked because Nobara would just keep damaging it with residents. And that would actually help Yuji out even more. But that's because that's, that's the thing with Junpei being there. He'd be able to add enough support, especially considering that Mahito's weaker. But. Let's see what no operator takes. Does, does Nobara still get got? Or does Nobara get saved by Junpei's presence? Or do they both get got? But considering Junpei's gonna make it to the Culling Games, or at least there's a timeline that no is gonna present where Junpei makes it to the Culling Games, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Let's take a look in a book, No Reading Rainbow. Harder for Akutami to beat the misogyny allegations, it also makes it sadder to know Junpei is just dragging Nobara down to her death as I'm leaving cannon and right there because i mean what <laughs> okay okay now wait a second wait a second no operator first things first language second thing second i need to write down before i lose the timestamp. absolutely and indefinitely hold on hold on hold on let me cook let me cook let me cook let me let me let me let me yeah we cooked but no operator why <laughs> So we're slopping. So we're oh, so let me get this straight. Let me get this. So we're slopping Junpei to the moon. We're giving him a stronger Shikigami, giving him crazy physicals. We're giving him extra Shikigami. We're doing all this. We're we're getting down on our knees, unzipping it, and dragging it down our throats for Junpei. 
But when you're presented with the smoothest, cleanest, easiest opportunity to beat the allegations, you double down? <laughs> that's now that's devious. I'm a devious individual myself in terms of like writing what ifs. I'm I'm also a fan of like oh <laughs> law of coin exchange, buckle, you're gonna lose something. Like I'm very much a full metal alchemist truther. But that that right there my computer, why you have to be so loud? But that right there that's devious. That's diabolical. No operator. No man man this is the thing. here's the thing. I feel like it's harder to justify it there. I feel like it's harder to just like, because there's two people that time. And you know Junpei, unlike Nobara, because I'll admit, in universe, it's kind of stupid that Nobara just freezes and then, like, I think that is kind of dumb in universe. I think, I, I don't know, personally, I'm kind of soft on the allegations because Gege Glaze is Maki, and I know that's just Gege Glazing Toji through Maki, but regardless, I, I'm low key against Gege really being on the allegations. I know, but what about Yorozu? What about Samuki? What about Yuki? What about Nobara? And what about Momo? What about Miwa? What about. Every other female character in the series. Don't matter. Maki solos. But with that being the case, literally and actually. But that those are the, those mean the same thing. But legitimately, dog, that that, that re re retaining the allegations when it's way more likely that either Junpei tweaks out immediately in response to Maito and just Nah and or like both of them are more on guard and both of them are more ready for a fight because Jun Nobara's more worried about Junpei's unstable mental state and Junpei's crashing out even harder. So, like, I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't maintain the whole narrative of the allegations, but, like, if you gotta, if, if you're gonna do it, I guess you might as well. Make Gege proud. <laughs> what am I gonna say? Make Gege proud. Make him Make them proud. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what you got. <laughs> that was unexpectedly devious. I'll, I'll admit, how many other what ifs has no operator done? I feel like I haven't seen that many. But like, darn dog, that was that was a twist. I my my ankles they're in pieces right now. I was not ready for that. But let's see. It's gonna go down exactly like it did before, as Junpei chases the Mahito double down into the subway. When the two Mahito switch. Nobara is still the one that ends up catching the short end of the stick. Junpei gets out of the way and leaves her to still get clapped in the face, putting another awful death. That is crazy! That is To imply that Junpei would dodge a Nobara? <laughs> no operator. I think we gotta put you on the watch now. Dog, what? What? Devious, diabolical, devious and diabolical, nothing else, double D's, double D's, write that in there, dog. <laughs> oh, darn, 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 dastardly, dastardly, devious, diabolical, every other D word that describes malice in some way shape or form bro wow <laughs> on both junpei and now yuji's hands the double with no curse technique instead of immediately getting obliterated by yuji fights junpei while the real mahito proceeds to torture itadori over the death of his friend with no idol transfigure Wait. double with no curse technique instead of immediately getting obliterated by yuji fights junpei while the real Mahito proceeds to torture Itadori over the death. You say, oh, God, but, uh, eh, oh, I think you would just get what? Like, why wouldn't Yuji still tweak out? Like, you'd see Junpei and be like, no, Junpei! But, like, you, you would still tweak out one shot. The but then again, you gotta have two Mahitos, right? I guess, I guess. And once again, if you're to have this weaker Junpei or this fodder Junpei who dodged with Nobara couldn't, I guess, have that Junpei fight a weaker Mahito than, like, actual Mahito. But, like... Well, we're, we're clearly... This is a Junpei video, so I get glazing Junpei, but... <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't get over that <laughs> Like, one of the few scenarios where you can actually keep her alive. Like, it's when Yuda's here and you place him specifically. It's when Akari's here and you place him specifically. Nobara actually gets to live. But it's super duper rare when she does, because, once again, just plot. But, no. She must be dropped, even in the no-operator timeline. All right. 
of his friend. With no idle transfiguration, just pure hands and slight shape shifting, Junpei is pushed to the absolute brink and discovers the level he's at is nowhere near Mahito's. Especially with all the evolving the Curse Spirit has done in these last couple of months. Junpei has barely scraped the surface Yuji was at when they first met at the school. While the real body black flashes and lectures Itadori about curses and humans, Junpei is on the precipice of death, bleeding out of every orifice, and his centipede Shikigami and Moondreg completely torn to shreds. Junpei is disgusted with his inability to do anything himself even having to rely on Shikigami instead of his own flesh and blood power. As Junpei fades in and out of consciousness, he wonders why Mahito ever even made him a sorcerer in the first place. His whole life he's been hated and bullied, but now, finally, Junpei's found friends to enjoy life with. And what was the cost? His mother. But Junpei had started to come to terms with that. This life is what she wanted for him. And yet, even in this life, those new friends are still dying, all at the hands of this one curse. Yuji protected Junpei back at the school, and Junpei Shikigami and Nobura protected him this whole time in Shibuya. And now that they're all gone, there's nothing Junpei can do but sit there and let Mahito kill him. Junpei's always tried his best to hide and stay out of the spotlight. Perhaps this never was his story to begin with. Maybe he never should have even been here in the first place. And it would be much easier to just fade away into the background forever. An image of his mother would flash into Junpei's mind. And suddenly, the last blockage, keeping Junpei's full sorcerer potential from reaching his brainstem, unlocks. Cursed energy flowing freely and truly grasping his core. Junpei reaches into the depths of what he truly is and wants to be. Junpei's always done his best at hiding, but perhaps he can use this to his advantage. Junpei had been tortured his whole life by smoke, constantly clouding his judgment and vision of the right path. No longer. Now, Junpei controls the smoke. Before losing the last bit of his life, Junpei takes hold of his newfound self and suddenly erupts in a cloud of smoke. As the Mahito double made a move for its killing blow, its hand begins to singe and disintegrate as it makes contact with the smoke, causing Mahito to jump back in defense. Junpei emerges from the cloud of heat as it begins to form tendrils and make the shape of an octopus behind him, the smoke taking form almost. Junpei Yoshino's curse technique is unlocked. Having been bullied by cigarettes his whole life to the point of being scarred forever, ironically enough, this smoke would now become his weapon. Able to drastically increase the heat of his smoke, use it to hide his movements or allies, as well as convert his body into smoke and take damage or critical hits much easier. The versatility in a curse technique like this is quite large. However, we won't explore this too much for now as Junpei still has plenty of development to go for his character and must work towards finding a completely new sense of self once Mahito is gone and his need for vengeance is quenched. For now though, this new power will be enough to completely disorient the Mahito clone and give Junpei the upper hand in battle, especially against a weakened Mahito double with no idle transfiguration. In Junpei's heightened stat slash awakened state, he should be able to manage that at the very least. And with Toto arriving to help Itadori out, Mahito is going to need to call that power back to himself and- I've been silent! I've been silent. I've been waiting. <laughs> I mean, like, like, it's his story. It's his, we gotta give it. It's his story. I, I, I'll, I'll just, I mean, I can't, and I even, here's the thing, I like the storytelling in the sense that you use the whole cigarettes motif, and like you flip that back on its head, and then you have the whole, like, the, I, I rock with that, I'm leaning with it, I'm kind of moving and grooving with it, it's like, I see the vision. That's crazy, though. <laughs> interesting, so we are covering Culling Gate, but then again, he probably just won't be included, but that's interesting. Are we gonna get a, are we gonna get a part two or something? Like... <laughs> Oh my, wow. I mean, the smoke technique is cool. 
and him like forming the octopus, the octopus representing like the willingness to change and the adaptability and the flexibility and freedom of smoke and like the contradiction of Junpei, a normal man becoming a sorcerer, and him wielding an octopus with which is born of smoke and the smoke being once again the opposite because that's related to fire and octopus is being related to water and then the contrast of the man who became a sorcerer. Like I see, I see the vision. Narratively, it does make sense. I, I can't knock it. And yeah, you you can you can contrive the story enough that the double just lives because like I guess Yuji just tweaks out or not, Ma, Junpei tweaks out hard enough that he knocks the double away, and then he loses. I guess yeah. Once again, I guess because it'd probably be Nobara mostly carrying, which is the funniest thing that she still gets one shot this time. <laughs> but like, I, I, I see the I see the vision. And yeah, and then Toto shows up. They beat Mahito, and then Junpei doesn't do anything because he's on the verge of the end anyway. So like. They just transmit. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm leaning with Iraq with it. I think this is, but that's the thing. When you're writing a what if like this, you have to do Junpei favoritism. You you can't you can't be realistic because <laughs> you can't be realistic. Yeah, yeah, you can't be. And to be fair, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be because I was I was initially against the idea of like him awakening a curse technique at all. But technically, it wouldn't be the first time. Because Higuruma and Takaba, they're two regular people who return to sorcerers who full on awaken curse techniques. And you can definitely argue Kenjaku just had a better control and like more focus when unlocking his versus Maito was kind of just tweaking around to make Junpei a sorcerer. So like, I ain't even leaving a rock with the idea of him awakening a curse technique. And being the Maito though, I can rock with that too. Eugene Toto showing up, taking care of the rest of the fight like in canon, that's fine. I thought, I'll admit, I thought he was going to play in a little bit more to the whole, you know, Yuji possibly being weaker without the manifestation of his hatred and stuff like that, and possibly play around with Shibuya a little bit more, but like with the length of the video, I should have realized that wasn't going to happen. And once again, it's pretty much unquantifiable how much weaker he'd be anyway, so like it's, it's, no, I'm not going to say it's pointless to go into, but it should be enough, right? Yeah, I can, I, once again, I can leave it around with it. I can leave it around with it. Specifically in the context of making this Junpei story. But once again, it comes down to the question of, like, what does he do now? Does he join Yuji and Megami in the Killing Games fiasco? Uh, I guess. But, like, he wouldn't do anything. Because he'd be separated somewhere. In fact, he, he may perish to Killing Games. Somehow. I don't know. I, I really don't see the vision. But I, I didn't see the vision for this entire video. So I, I, I went in blind. And my eyes kept getting opened further and further and further. So... Let's see what remains of this beautiful vision that is yet to be laid bare. Anyway, this new resolve and self-confidence in Junpei would allow him to understand the gap between him and Mahito. Now, comfortable with his place in the world and realizing Junpei isn't the one to kill the disaster curse, he would opt to stay with Nita and the dead, question mark, Nobara, while the also newly reinvigorated Yuji Itadori and a fresh Aoi Toto go off to set the timeline back into place. After being healed by Nita and happy that his mom's soul can rest in peace with the death of Mahito, Junpei's character would now revolve around what he plans to do next. An average teenager converted into a sorcerer against his will in a moment of weakness by a curse that no longer exists does Junpei return to his normal life, or does he play the new coming death battle royale known as the Culling Game, fighting alongside his newfound friends? Owing Yuji a debt of gratitude, as well as Satoru Gojo and Megami, with plenty more to potentially learn in regards to his curse technique, Smoke Manipulation. The Culling Game is the perfect opportunity for Junpei to pay back that debt, as well as explore the depths of his new sorcerer powers. If that sounds like an interesting addition to this all new Junpei timeline, let me know in the comments down below and I'll cover it. Because unfortunately, that's all there's gonna be for this one. Okay. Thank you again for all of my members voting on I'm leaning with it. I'm rocking with it. I'm, I'm down. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Yet yeah, there's that told you we're just talking about in this video. Uh, but uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna knock it. It was, it was an interesting. It was an interesting timeline. I wouldn't mind. I really. I'm interested to see how he continues it. Cause like I'll admit he had to low key get fan fiction to make June pay that strong to begin with. Like, you'd have to make some logical leaps. So I'm interested to see how he would justify Culling Game. Because he would have to make up a whole new character. He would have to. There's no, like... Because, once again, the way the Culling Games works, if they all went to Tokyo, even if it was Yuji, Megami, and uh, Junpei, 
that would get weird because they'd all be separated. So Megumi and Junpei and Yuji would still all be separated. So I think no operator would have to make up a whole new scenario. And I'd love to see how he'd incorporate Junpei into Shibuya. Like that. So not in Shibuya, in the Shinjuku Showdown arc. So yeah, honestly, I'd be down to see. I'm not a member of no operator, obviously. But yeah, I'll leave a like. I may, I'll probably leave a comment too. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing the part too. All right, all right. W video. I, I think Nobara got unjustifiably annihilated, but <laughs> but I guess you got to keep some of the character development, right? You got to keep at least there's a little bit, a little taste of it, a little taste of it. So you might as well keep that taste. If you can't sacrifice Junpei, kind of sacrifice somebody. But overall, a very, very, very W video. If you want to see the whole video originally in full without my domain expansion, Horizon the Captivating Yapper on top of it, the links to No Operator and the video will be in the description down below. I to thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a Sonic, you know what time it is. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave... Smoke snake. Whether that be one word or two words, leave smoke snake in the comment section down below. Now I did thank you so much for watching. Why did that come out so weird? Now I did thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that little bit case bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do happen to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as little as one kind of month. Dumb month. Things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reaction to the very next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen, add free variations of all my videos, and if you become a twenty-five dollar patron or a twenty-five dollar member, you can order whatever video you want. Now I did thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys. Have have a wonderful day. This is Dag of the Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three lower members, O'Connor Plays, Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Eternal Flame, Teen Midgal, Quarencia Tala, and Red Wolf. 4765. And I'd like to give a thank you to our $5 patrons, Steron, Sean, Panda Goat, Midnight Lord 21, Marcus, Kevin, Igneal, and Eak1. And I'd like to give another thank you to our $7 members, Autumn's Mornings Lazo and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give a hefty thank you to our $10 member, Banana Phone. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our ten dollar patrons, Joaquin, Jermaine, and Idem Okami. And I'd like to give a big gargantuan thank you to our twenty five dollar patron, China Doll 09. And another gargantuan juicy scrumdly thank you to our twenty five dollar patron, Calvin Elder.